Whoa, the Irish electorate has given their woke establishment a right political bloody nose. Oh, did Lee Anderson really say that when he crossed the floor to Reform UK today? voted in two referendums on Friday to change the wording in their constitution regarding women in the home. But it seems that the overwhelming majority of voters there want things to stay exactly as they are. They've rejected what the weeping soy latte quaffing left would call progressive policies. By a margin of 67% to 33%, they rejected the removal of the concept of marriage from the constitution to have it replaced with the concept of a durable relationship. And they also rejected the removal of reference to a mother's duties in the home so it could be replaced by something about recognising care provided by family members. And for some inexplicable reason, the establishment ran those referendums on International Women's Day and they probably thought that would help tip the balance towards the woke progressive answer. I think it might have had the reverse effect. And this will send shivers up the spines of our UK wokerati. The idiot woke progressives in the Labour Party will now worry that this kickback by traditionalists might spill over into UK politics. But the Irish have the protection of their written constitution that can only be changed by a majority vote. Here in the UK, we rely on party political manifestos and then parties, when voted into power, sticking to those manifestos. Only when they fear a big backlash do governments go for a referendum here in the UK. But only when they think they will win it, as in the Brexit referendum in 2016. Now, as far as I can see, most, if not all, the politicians in the Republic of Ireland were fully behind these progressive changes. And they're now all blaming their coalition PM, Leo Varadkar, for running a lacklustre campaign. With The Guardian saying, The three ruling parties, Varadkar's Fianna Gael, Fianna Fáil and the Greens, alongside the main opposition parties, plus a host of non-governmental organisations, had all campaigned for a yes-yes vote. All were left chastened by the results. And for his part, Leo Varadkar said, It was our responsibility to convince the majority of people to vote yes, and we clearly failed to do so. Now, he had said he wanted to remove some very old and very sexist language about women from their constitution. But the people, including the women, were definitely not convinced. In fact, I would say this is a definite rejection of the whole woke agenda in Ireland. But as ever, it is the people, the proletariat, that are wrong. The highly intelligent and cultured establishment cannot surely be wrong. So they'll be off to rewrite the proposals to have another referendum on it and then keep going until they get the result they want. Maybe after a few more tranches of woke brainwashed students have gone through their university system, maybe. And I'll remind you what happened in Ireland in June 2008. The EU put forward the Lisbon Treaty as a constitution to basically form the EU as a country. Only one of the then EU 27 member states was required to have a referendum on it, the Republic of Ireland, and they voted no by 53.4% to 46.6%. So what did their establishment, coupled with the EU, do about that? They regrouped, and 16 months later, in October 2009, they re-ran the referendum and won it by 67.1% to 32.9%. So I suspect this is what will happen with these women and family referendums. But what worries me is what does Keir Starmer's Labour Party have planned woke-wise in the UK? And given this Irish result, Labour will probably do all they can to disguise the direction they wish to force this country down. 
now. If you missed the grand announcement, here's some very recent news from this morning. Good morning, everybody. Very good to see you this Monday morning. Thanks for being here. Now, something extraordinary happened last week. The Chancellor, he said, we have a plan and the plan is working. The Prime Minister repeats it endlessly. Clearly, no one's told them that the economy, our country, is in recession. Clearly, no one's told them that that recession per person is the longest since records began almost 70 years ago. People are getting poorer. That recession, almost two years per person. If that's their plan, well, it's not the plan of the British people to get poorer. Let's be honest, it's not surprising they're sinking in the polls if they think a recession is a good idea. And something significant has changed in recent months. I've noticed people's concerns and anxiety has turned to anger and fury. Because nothing works. Britain is broken. And we all know who broke it. There are so many areas where it's broken. But let me just give you a few examples. I mean, there is absolute fury across the country that the Tories have imposed on us without any democratic consent whatsoever, in complete breach of what they promised in the 2019 manifesto and previous manifestos. They've imposed on us mass immigration that we can see from the data is making us poorer. No question whatsoever. People also, separately, are appalled at what's going on in our streets, in our towns and our cities, week in, week out, with these anti-Semitic, hate-filled, pro-Hamas marches that is leading to genuine fear. The Jewish community in London, afraid to go out at the weekend, many of them thinking about leaving London to go back to Israel. What a shocking indictment of the performance of the boss of the Met Police, of the person in charge of security in London, the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, of the Home Secretary and of the Prime Minister, that the Jewish community are terrified. Absolutely appalling. Separately, people are horrified, horrified that this gender ideology is infecting our schools, poisoning the minds of our children, parents, grandparents in their millions, shocked by this. And also, people are waking up to the absurd multi-trillion pound cost of this obsession with net zero. But any of us who want to talk about this, oh no, we're a bigot, there we're smeared, we must be labelled, we're phobic in some way. No, we're not. We're just talking common sense. The genuine concerns of tens of millions of people up and down the country. And it's only Reform UK that is prepared to have that conversation. I've said it before, but I have to say, I think the Westminster establishment has never been more out of touch with the concerns of tens of millions of hard-working British people up and down the country. That's why we're going up in the polls. Just last week, we were only 5% behind the Tories who are sinking under sinking Sunak to just 18%. We're going up and they're going down. Now, many people think this is a short-term pressure group for one election. Forget it. You're wrong. This is a serious, medium-term plan. We have to shape and influence and change the course of direction of this country of ours. Because at the moment, it is broken and people are getting poorer. And where does this start? Well, I'll tell you where we're polling even higher. And that, of course, is in the Red Wall. Millions and millions of people, as they hear about us, they say, thank heavens for reform. So let's be clear about our ambition. It's bold, it's ambitious. In the Red Wall, this election, we want to replace the Tories as the main alternative to Starmageddon. That's what it is. It's a nightmare coming to everyone near you in 2024. 
So we're going to replace the Tories in the Red Wall, which means we need a champion, of course, of the Red Wall, someone who completely understands it, who is trusted by voters to tell it as it is, no nonsense, no waffle, clear, basic common sense. And I'm delighted to announce that I have found that champion of the Red Wall for Reform UK. He's also, coincidentally, going to be Reform UK's first member of Parliament in the House of Commons. He is, of course, a person of great integrity, no nonsense, and is the member of Parliament in the county of Nottinghamshire for Ashfield. Please welcome Mr Lee Anderson. Thank you very much indeed. Thank Brilliant. You. Let's go have a quick, uh, quick vote of it. Who said that? He's not having an interview now. He's not having an interview. Brilliant. So, Reform UK has its first Member of Parliament. And, unlike in the UKIP days, when Mark Reckless and Douglas Carswell left the Tories and joined UKIP, there will be no by-election. With the Reform UK leader Richard Tice saying that a by-election would be a waste of time, given that a general election is just weeks or months away. Now here's some of what Lee Anderson said. Oh, and he also confirmed he wasn't offered money to defect to Reform UK. So I'm going to keep it brief, guys, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and we'll start by saying, I want my country back. Over the last year or so, I've had to do a lot of soul searching on my political journey. And it was laughing. And I don't expect much in politics other than to be able to speak my mind and speak on behalf... Is that you, Harry, laughing? Speak on behalf of my friends, family and my constituents. Now, I might not know a lot of these long words some of the people use in Parliament, but I know a few short ones. Uh, but unfortunately, this sometimes leads me to be labelled as controversial, controversial in my opinions. But my opinions are not controversial. They are opinions which are shared by millions of people up and down the country. It's not controversial to be concerned about illegal immigration. It's not controversial to be concerned about legal migration. It's not controversial to be, you know, worried, concerned about the Metropolitan Police and a failing London mayor, and the hate marchers, the street crime, and the shoplifters literally getting away with ruining businesses on a daily basis. It's not controversial to fight back in a culture war, a culture war that is sweeping our nation. I am proud of our great country and the gifts it has given to the world over hundreds of years. Gifts like the Industrial Revolution, railways, culture, sports, medicine, such as vaccines, which have saved hundreds of millions of lives. Now that might uh, shock a few Reform UK voters and supporters. And we've defeated fascism in two world wars. We've always punched above our weight on the international stage. But now, like millions of people in this country, I feel that we are slowly giving our country away. We are giving away our way of life. We are allowing people to erase our history. We are giving up our streets to a minority of people who literally hate our way of life. We are allowing people into our country that will never integrate and adopt our British values. Parliament doesn't seem to understand what many British people want. And quite frankly, some of them need to get out more. I made some remarks a few weeks back about the London Mayor, for which I was stripped of the whip in the, from the Conservative Party. And let me be clear, right now, on this stage, I will not apologise. It is no secret that I've been talking to my friends in Reform for a while, and Reform UK has offered me the chance to speak out in Parliament on behalf of millions of people up and down the country who feel that they're not being listened to. People will say that I've took a gamble, and I'm prepared to gamble on myself, as I know from my mailbag how many people in this country support Reform UK on what they have to say. 
and like millions of people up and down the country, all I want is my country back. Now this may sound offensive to the Liberal elite, but it's not offensive to my friends, my family, my constituents and some of my donors. Constituents like my mum and dad, who told me they could not vote for me unless I joined Reform UK. My parents are both nearly 80 and they get it and I must not let them down. As I said at the beginning, I want my country back. Thank you. Interesting. Now, Tice went on to say that when he was a child, he was told we could trust the government, the police and the post office, and that was the embodiment of the UK, he said. That's all now in the past tense, isn't it? Food for thought, eh?